uh, uh, in this kind of a situation that uh, especially in, in Hong Kong, everybody stays for so long time. Uh, it's very nice that I can see so many familiar people here. So I, I want to uh, talk about the, some recent progress in uh, Gorm Witten theory. Uh, so this progress, this is a result about the uh, uh, Feynman structure uh, that I will try to spend uh, um, possibly half, more than half of, the, of this talk over. Uh, so uh, it, in the beginning, it might be uh, uh, basic for experts, but uh, as I know that uh, most people are, try, uh, are not working in Gomuitan anymore and uh, move into shift theory, which are more popular and more interesting perhaps. Uh, so I would like to remind people that uh, about some history uh, in Gomuitan theory. Okay, so uh, let me start. So the first part is about Gromwitten. So uh, uh, if you pick up a smooth projective variety, uh, you can count a number of uh, genus G curves uh, mapped to your variety of degree D. Uh, so uh, you can e even uh, require points on your curve uh, uh, mapped to some manifolds and with possible tangencies. So for example, if you uh, non fix your target variety, you, you may you are counting a number of, uh, in this case, number of uh, curves of genus G, and uh, uh, you want it to be holomorphic. And the, the target is your variety Z, and you represent the, the degree D. This, is, this D is in the second uh, cohomology of your Z. And then uh, your, your target, uh, here, H1, H2, H3 are individually telling you that you are, you are counting more refined uh, data. So uh, the, you pick up concurrency of your first the H1, concurrency of H2, and concurrency of H3. And then the, 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 the image will be roughly looks like a, a curve and uh, with prescribed uh, points on your curve go to the in individual uh, sum manifolds. And there's a way to make sense of this counting. Uh, uh, there are some subtleties that I will try to uh, uh, talk uh, here. Uh, I mean, but so so possibly your your sub manifold is not algebraic, and still this can still be defined. So uh, that is something that the Gromitian theory people uh, never try to touch uh, because it's not algebraic. But uh, first of all. Uh, 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 now, if you try to, uh, oh, oh, this is very bad. <laughs> okay, so, so if, I, if you put a Psi or Psi square here, it means that you prescribe certain tangencies at the corresponding points. So there are a very well uh, uh, de definition of this kind of uh, countings. Uh, this will become a rational number. So this county is indeed a symplectic invariant. Uh, it will have some bubbling behavior because you are, you are, your map uh, to your target may become uh, something that looks like uh, this, where all the degrees on the P1 with a nodal singularity here, and the bubbling may not, may not necessarily bubble up a, a, a P1 or it can bubble up uh, higher genus curves. Uh, this is due to Gromov. And uh, it also admits a pass integral interpretation in the beginning, that's by Witten, which is illegal in mathematics. And that's why we call it gromov witten invariance. The symplectic definition is not friendly for evaluations. If you want to calculate things, you, there's no machinery to do it. Uh, pass integral has advantage. That is, you can relate to dual duality, that there are many words that you may heard from uh, a, a physicist, but something like M theory, S duality, T duality, whatever. It is very bad in convergence because when you do the dual theory, which are actually defined in pass integral, but not in algebraic geometry, or most of the case, uh, those pass integral uh, are, usually, are usually diverge. They are usually diverge. Okay, so it, it was uh, like 30 years ago, uh, Jun Li and Gang Tian, they discovered the counting is all about a very spatial cycle in a modular space of stable maps. So this is the notation of modular of stable maps. So you are t looking at all the uh, holomorphic maps from the curve to Z, genus G, and you can vary the complex structure of your curve. It can be a nodal curve, 
and the degree is D. So you push for a fundamental class. This is D uh, in the H2, represent the H2. And the genus, uh, 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 there's a certain stability being required where in this case, you may understand as automorphism is finite. So uh, that's, that's uh, detailed things that I try to skip. And then uh, uh, this is a modular space and this is going to be a 30 member stack. Uh, uh, just like the, the previous talk, uh, Toda mentioned the module of shifts on, on a variety. We talk about module of shifts here, module of maps into the into the variety. It's a thirty member stack, and then uh, inside of this stack, you may use a spatial uh, procedure invented by the ETN to construct a cycle in the in the uh, in the uh, in this mo in, in this space. Okay. Oh, that's that's my wrong design. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, this virtual cycle is constructed using deformation theory and, and uh, all the previously stated Gromitian invariants, which I didn't really define, either by synthetic geometry, Gromov, or by pass integral, by Witten, they now ad actually admit a algebraic geometry construction using this, using this uh, virtual cycle. So this discovery made Gromitian invariants approachable by studying modular spaces in uh, algebraic geometry. And indeed, uh, it, it, it uh, <coughs> will also meet the problem that previous slides mentioned about one by the, the, the bubbling behavior and also the convergence issue, uh, either you use synthetic or pass integral approach to define it. So why are these things interesting? So I want to try to talk back those people who do shifts, who do go Witten theory. <laughs> so they tell you number of algebraic curves uh, map or inside the variety. You can use it to study geometry of variety when you are looking at problems con connecting points with curves, especially with higher genus curves and with high degree curves. So uh, it, it was a very long time. It has been very many, many years that people just study rational curves. Uh, but in Gromit, you can do higher genus. Just the calculation method is very, is missing. It's, oh, sorry. Oh my God. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, that's my fault. So, oh, what happened? Gosh. I'm sorry, that's my. Uh, I cannot do this. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what happened? Uh, okay, uh, my apology, uh, this is my, I'm new to this, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, now, okay, let me continue. So uh, yeah, very sorry for that. So uh, why are these things interesting? So in the case that uh, you can completely calculate all these invariants, which are very, very rare, uh, the, this series, uh, formed by the, the invariants we just mentioned, they can solve some very special integrable systems, which are very, very popular, uh, were very popular before, KDB equations, KP equations. And also uh, the other reason is that the uh, gromm witten invariance is equivalent to counting shifts. The Donaldson-Thomas invariance mentioned uh, in previous talk, uh, PT invariance, and at, least, at least for the case for Calabial three folds. Therefore, they, the, uh, these are get, giving in you the same information. So it depends on which approach is better, but they are talking about the same numbers. So therefore the determination of gromm witten invariance, uh, its value or the structures, it will be one of the problem uh, important in iterative geometry. Now uh, let's look at the, those cases that has been handled. So the, when your target variety is a point, it was a well-known situation by conservation in Sapani. The Witten conjecture gave you the, the whole from Witten invariance. When it's project spaces, uh, you, uh, you can have a uh, torus localization. Uh, that is a very strong method. Uh, reduce the situation to points. And uh, it is uh, after Padiharambade, Grabber, and also given house package of this machinery, 
and in Tory case uh, by similar similar reason. So uh, this line commonest in the case that your variety is semi-simple. This is a uh, this is defined to be that your H two uh, generates uh, your four cohomology quantumly. That is using genus zero uh, counting curves, uh, uh, you can generate uh, somehow. Uh, so most general, I mean, you have this kind of definition, semi-simple is very is actually uh, uh, not really that general. It is it is quite restrictive, in a sense that on the most example we know is just toric and frag variety. So you pick whatever hypersurface in, in CPN, it just it, it is not semi-simple. So uh, one of the main cases is the compact club L3-4, which is not semi-simple, actually uh, easy to be checked. And these are the main ingredients in the type 2A string theory. So this is the, uh, uh, I'm talking about the line that, that, that from Witten's uh, viewpoint. So now we have this uh, modular space of stable maps, inside of which you have a virtual cycle, but it is of dimension zero. Uh, if you just fix genus and degree, the dimension will be zero. These people call this virtual dimension. So uh, the numbers you want to associate from the cycle, uh, the essentially consists of the, its degree. It's a zero dimensional thing, you just take degree, then you get NGD, the number of genus G degree D holomorphic maps to, to your variety. So this is a, a genuine counting for compact Calabria threefolds. And it is widely believed that uh, a, part, a large part, a part of this modular space for your variety, complex structure is generic, or these genus three degree curves, they are isolated. So that will be related to Gopakumova invariance that uh, Koda mentioned, uh, I think you mentioned. And uh, 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 this is actually a rational number. But here it is counting maps. It's related to Gopakumova somehow. Okay, so uh, determining these kind of numbers are extremely difficult. Uh, so a typical example is the Fermat quintic Calabial threefold. That's just cut out by the quintic equation in CP4. And that's just uh, take for granted that the NGD is this counting uh, genus G curve degree D in this quintic. Now you can, before talking about any method to approach it, you may just uh, try to collect all the NGD and you sum up according to degree using a formal variable and this is, this is just a generating function. People call it genus G generating function. This is a spatial functions that uh, if, you can, uh, if you follow string theory, it appears in, 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 in their, in their uh, definition of M theory or two way string theory, where nobody know how to calculate for compact Calab Yau, but for toric Calab Yau, it is, it is a standard using the torus law equation. So determine these numbers now, which is definable using algebraic geometry and uh, asking whether there's a method to, to uh, calculate them. It was mission impossible for two de decades. And all methods in the toric or semi-simple case, they fail. Because in this case, your color BL has no C star action. You cannot do torus localization. And if you just use brutal force to analyze the singularity, which really matters, even the, even the non-reduced structure matters. That will matter. That, that will affect the multiplicity. The singularity is crazily bad. Nobody will will will, will use this line unless you uh, relate this modular space with the modular space of maps to CP4 because it's, because it's a hypersurface. Now uh, you it is possible to analyze this modular space singularity, which Zinger did it in genus one. And uh, I'm pretty sure in genus two cases, this is not finished for certain reasons. I mean, too complicated. So mirror symmetry says that uh, this is something that physicists tell us uh, how to approach this kind of invariant from the viewpoint of pass integral, which uh, by definition doesn't belong to this conference, but uh, allow me to say, to talk about this <laughs> because uh, yeah, that's what I want to say. So physics physicist, in 89, they say that there's a mirror family of compact Calabial threefold. This is a family. T is a parameter, one dimensional. And there's a transformation between the, the variable. So before uh, your Gromowitan's invariance is defined to be this guy. This is FG. And then A means A side. A, A, this A is a A kind, A kind of realization of certain passing integral. 
And the, the, the definition here uh, says that there's another different way of realize the stem pest integral. They call it B kind. And that will give you uh, the B side FG. It is, it is some invariant associated to the color B or YT. So this Q is a, is a variable and making the pest integral, the 2B string theory, satisfy this inequality. Uh, sorry, equality, sorry. <laughs> I didn't take a nap. It means that the, the same string theory, but you realize in, in geometry in using the A fashion, and you realize the same pest integral using geometry in B side fashion, they give you different functions. Uh, they, of course, bypass the issue of convergence, uh, where in this case, it is actually a big issue that it may not be definable in mathematics, but it, is, it makes sense in the sense uh, a pass integral realized in geometry in, using the B side sense. Now, this is a function associated to YT. In case you look at genus equals zero, this, is, this guy is nothing but some combination of periods of your mirror compact Calabria three four. So that will be very uh, illuminating because one side, this is a counting curves, genus zero curves of various degree. And when you take their sum and using change of variable, this change, change variable, it becomes a uh, 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 period. So that will give a prediction of all the genus zero for Witten invariants. And mathematicians took years to verify genus zero degree two and three. And finally, after 10 years, 89 to 96, they catch up this uh, verification. Now, uh, a side remark is that uh, in the B-side coordinate, uh, it is actually a family of Calabi-Yau. So there are very spe special three kinds of points. So the Q points may be zero, maybe one, maybe infinity. So at zero, it, the, the Calabi-Yau become five, five planes. Uh, this is called the large bottom limit. And at one, it is called the conifer point. The calabi develops develop a conifer singularity. At the infinity, it develops an obifor singularity. People call it obifor point. So the, the, the reason that I need, I need to write it down is that in physicists, it, is, it matters very much that even for themselves, they do not expect, they actually they, they know that this kind of pass integral is not defined when Q is equal to one. It is not defined. And for the other, for the other Q, for each Q or say for each T, it is defined. For each T, there's an there's a integration over all the smooth maps from genus tree curves to, your, to this YT, mirror carbial, and you integrate something, and they expect some uh, renormalization procedure that is throw away infinity procedure will result in a finite, well-defined FG, VT. So, so it is not defined here. It has trouble defined here because the, the target carbia is singular. There's no metric. The definition requires a metric. The definition has trouble here. It is, it is all before. It has no metric, and, and the metric is bad. But the convergence, I mean, the, the, for, each, for each Q here, the limit exists, exists, but has a pole here, conical point. So, but for mathematicians, all this kind of thing is, is, just, is just cheating because the pass integral doesn't converge. They just do not converge. I, I'm sorry, I cannot write down the pass integral. Uh, that maybe should be in other conference, so anyway. Okay, so the, let, let's look at the historical development. So if you just read the mirror symmetry prediction, the A model, B model, FG are equal, and it just denoted by FG for convenience, genus zero, the B side is done by physicists in 89, it is, it is by periods, and in A side, given to Liang Liang Yao, they really count genus zero curves in quintic Calabria using the machinery of genus zero curves in P4. When it comes to genus one, uh, it becomes very complicated uh, there are four people, uh, B, B, C, O, V, allow me not to mention their name. In 91, in B side, they deduced the F1 using this pass integral resistance and the property they expected. But in A side, it comes to 2009. So by Eric Singer. Uh, uh, I, uh, yeah. So, so you can see that, <clears throat> you see that this difference is like 10 years and uh, we improve each genus by every 10 years actually because this is also around 10 years. So now the red one, the red part are those parts that actually do not exist in mathematics. In mathematics, there's no such thing. The, the, the theory they use do not exist. The, the, it is already checked. The, the B model, higher, the, the passing group, they try, they try to define this. 
the there's a path integral da 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 diverge they diverge even when genus is zero it is or it is a work of uh of uh, 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 uh of uh Li Si and uh, Li Qin they diverge and there exists a Feynman's renormalization way to throw away the divergent part and the, the remainder convergent part defined this and give you the period that they predicted. Okay, so this is something outside your geometry, but this renormalization doesn't work in genus positive. And there's no way to make it converge. But this is called uh, non-renormalizable. I mean, the gravity cannot be renormalized. Okay, so in B side, uh, there are three people in 2009, I mean, they have this advantage using the V model FG, they obtain all the FG. And it, it is a very funny question to, to Grom Witten theorists, making us feel very discouraged that why can they be so fast? And whatever reason they, they become so fast, is it possible to make them into algebraic geometry, just like Gang Tian or Li did, Jun Li did? That's a very natural question. Well, it is for me. All right, so, so you can keep on asking the B, C, or V, and uh, they will tell you that's the, this, the following is their reason. So the gromm witten theory is indeed OLR class of some infinite rank vector bundle uh, over the space of smooth maps. From, for every point, smooth map, you ask whether D bar is zero, and that gives you a bundle of structure, you take OLR class. Passive integral is its first original definition. Its mirror equivalent form can be helpful, but it diverge. It actually diverge. I mean, after renormalization, it converge. So assume that there's no convergence issue. That's what the physicist did. Using the pass integral in B model, that can give you the structural property expected dominating all the FG, that is by BCOV in 92. So this is the well-celebrated uh, holomorphic anomaly equation. So first of all, they enhance a B model pass integral. This is this is supposed to be give you Gromitian theory match Gromitian theory. They created a new variable T bar in this extend the definition a little bit, such that when T bar goes to in, in minus infinity, it recover the Gromitian invariance. And then, if you try to uh, when they try to differentiate this newly defined object against T bar, they find out it is consists of lower genus information and the lower genus information. The picture is very funny. So suppose genus is three. This is, the picture is here. This is gen, G1 and G2 and connect with some very special point called, corresponds to this T bar. And, 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 and the, the other picture will be uh, genus two and with a PR one with a, with a very special T bar. Okay. So the, the three terms, all these terms represent uh, the different uh, domain curves, but there are very special term here that making solving the equation uh, a little bit uh, 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 non-trivial. So to solve this equation, which they call holomorphic anomaly equation, that is, I mean, the right hand side is not zero, so this is called holomorphic anomaly. Anomaly means that it is not holomorphic. Okay, so uh, they set up three functions. So what they do is that they, they, they try to set this guy to be D bar of something S11. They define S11 making this happen. Making, making this guy to be, to be that. And the only reason is that it's doing the following thing, the following simple calculus. So, so they try to do integration by parts and move this D bar inside the right-hand side. It can, there are formulas. And when, it's, when this D bar travel inside FG, travel here, jump in front of here, then they can use induction to this guy again. So they create these three uh, S11, S1, and S, very strange functions, and they use them to solve FG, solve this guy, showing FG satisfy certain rule called Feynman rule. And this S11, S1, S are called propagators. They play the role of something attached to the Feynman rule's edge. So I will try to elaborate this a little bit more. So to be more precise, to solve the equations, they play the following game. They rewrite it to be D bar of plus this. This is a graph sum. Uh, you associate functions associate, uh, for each graph. There are, for ages, it is like S11 or S or S1. 
And for each vertexes, it is the genus G part of FG, F or F lower genus. So the HAE is being rewrite to be some combinatoric objects, which is not really complicated, but that is equal to, that is d bar being zero, then it becomes holomorphic. So this is after setup. It, it becomes a holomorphic function in the either V model parameter or in Q, in a Q or in T, whatever. Now this doesn't tell uh, too, too much at this moment, but I will try to highlight this uh, delicate point here. All this uh, doesn't make sense in algebraic geometry. So Feynman rule, well, I mean, algebraic geometry has no this. <laughs> this doesn't exist. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have D bar. This <laughs> Okay, so let me try to give more detail in Feynman rule, okay, because that's what my talk is about. So the rule in more detail is like this. There are three kinds of edges. It is solid edge, solid edge, or this kind of it is a solid and a dotted edge, and this is dotted edge. They will be assigned each a spatial uh, functions in Q, which are solutions of the uh, uh, in the previous slides, and to vertexes, to each vertex, you know, uh, like if you have a graph, uh, each vertex will have, uh, have, have some edges inserted to it, but your edge may be dotted and may be solid. So, because each edge has, can have half of them to be dotted, half of it to be dotted. Now, uh, if you have several solid edge and you have several dotted edge, then you will assign according to the number of the, these kind of edges, a very special power series, which is almost close, very, very close to FG. So in the following sense, solid line just mean geometry, a hyperplane class H. Dotted line just mean the Psi. We have mentioned in the first slides, this is uh, roughly speaking, you counting curves with the tangency Psi. Now FG and N you, in, you associate to each vertex is some constant, don't worry about it. Uh, and you count number of genus G uh, curves mapped to your quintic with, with points passed by the hyperplane class Poincaré or There are one, two, three, there are n many points. And then all the uh, n other points, they have this precise condition, okay? Don't worry about the uh, 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 precise definition. And I want to say is that here are special things that you need to sum up all the degrees. So FG and N associated to each vertex is determined by FG. They have the same information as the ser as, <coughs> as series. The, the FG and N is just FG. They, they, they are formulas determine each other in a very trivial way. So this is a Feynman rule. Let's look at the uh, uh, example. Say total genus is two. You, the, the easiest graph is one vertex with genus two. Then you write it F2. F2 means F2 zero, zero. There are no, no edge, solid edge inserted, no dot, dotted edge inserted. Now the second easiest graph is this guy. Then this is a, this is a vertex of genus one and there is a one solid insertion. So that's here. It means no zero, no, no, no precise insertion. So this is what you are going to insert. This point give you F11. The other point give you F11. And the edge, the, the, this edge is a solid, solid edge. This half is solid, this half is solid. So you pick S11, a, a special power series. One over two is the automorphism of the graph. Now this is a loop. The loop has total genus two. This the point is genus one and the loop total is one plus one is two. And this is, this is you are going to insert. So a point, give you the genus one, and there are two solid insertion, so this is two. And there are no precise insertions. And this edge, uh, this edge is S11. This is half of them is solid, the other half is solid, so this is S11. Now, there are many graphs, and uh, for example, the last, uh, the, the last one I would just try to say will be that uh, uh, now this is a picture that you do have a, 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 hell, hell, a edge which is uh, dotted and, and solid. So you get S1. S1 should be S, S1 per side, but we use the note. So one edge is solid, the other one is per side, dotted edge. Okay, so this exhausts all the genus two graph according to the rule, each one you, you assign a term and then you sum them up. And this is, the, the, you, when you solve the HA equation, this will be obtained this, D bar, 
of this equals zero. That's the, that's the previous HA equation. You just rewrite it, it comes like this. And which means that the guy you, you debar, the guy you take debar is a holomorphic function. Oh. Okay. Uh, I was too excited. I'm sorry. Uh, that means that the guy you, uh, the guy in the graph sum is a holomorphic function. This guy is a homomorphic function. That's why we do not write down Q and Q bar. We, we do not write this. This is a pure holomorphic power series in Q or uh, just a function in Q. It's a holomorphic function in Q. At the point that the Q, Q space integral B model is well defined, this, this right hand side converge. Okay, the convergence is an issue. Now, uh, a special uh, observation is that the leading term is the genus two. And when you want to approach genus two potential calculation, you of course, by induction, assume that you know all the lower genus power series. The, all the lower graphs, except the, the first one, except the leading one, they have genus, the vertex has at most genus one. So by induction, you know everything. And suppose you know this as propagators, then you can, you can possibly uh, determine big F2. Okay, I will repeat that. Uh, so that, that, that's the principle. So now here comes something very subtle. Uh, there's a regularity assumption. In VCOB paper, regularity is used everywhere. And the limited choice of solutions. And uh, this, will, this actually originated from the convergence of pass integral, and it is not accessible for mathematicians. So to be more detailed, S11 can be solved. All these three can be solved. You can pick one solution so that this, 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 uh, this propagator has uh, something they want, uh, uh, converge outside a spatial point Q is zero, one infinity. This is something called the Bio-Peterson metric. I will not tell you about that in mirror Calabria. This EK is uh, something called the Keller potential. It's, some, it's just a mirror Calabria three form and you play this integral that become a function of a Calabria complex structure. So both are, are functions in, in, in Q. And then uh, after the solution, Yamakushio and 0, 04, they find, they just interpret the VCOVs into a more uh, systematic way. Uh, they find out there are four functions. Uh, actually, they call this guy by the name A, and they call this guy by the name B. And there are four functions, and under this, S11 becomes A plus 2B minus 2. And all the others also can be represented by the, the four functions. And the four functions together with a fifth one, which is a rational function in Q, this is the, 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 fifth, the fifth one, these five functions are algebraic independent so that the propagators may be uh, interpreted uh, as, as polynomials of this five, five, five guy. If you take T bar go to infinity, uh, you, by their language, it is called holomorphic limit. Then the propagators will become just a spatial power series. The first four are very spatial infinite long series in Q. And the, the last one is just a, also a series, but it is a rational. So the first four, they are not rational. They, they come from solving pickup proofs. They are periods. Like this guy's periods, this guy's periods. And all the five generators, they actually converge near Q equals zero, the large volume limit. So this, is, this, this propagator information is completely known by Yamaguchi and Yao in 2004. But this is, of course, after uh, BCOV's paper, assumption, all their assumption, pass integral converge. So by the regularity assumption of pass integral, uh, BCOV proposed the small fg, there's a graph sum equals small fg. They say, okay, now this is a holomorphic and uh, in most of the other, outside most of the points, and they even have this regularity, they know they can predict how the pass integral, they can argue that the pass integral converge near several points and at the pole, at the pole at one, it has some, uh, the pole under control by some higher level physics theory, people call conformal theory. Then they, argue, they give the conjecture that this FG, small FG is a polynomial in X of degree less than or equal to 3G minus 3. This is for quintic Calabria case. For other Calabria, it's, it's different number. And they didn't do it for, for other Calabria. All right, so let's look at genus two case. This is the, the previous pictures. Now, this is the, the equation we just say. Uh, the right hand side is a holomorphic in Q, but X is just Q5, one minus Q5. So it's a rational, this is rational in 
in Q. So by the BCOB conjecture, your f small f2 is a polynomial in X of the degree no larger than, because your total genus is two now. So your degree, X degree is no larger than three. This guy can be represented by some number plus another number X plus another number X squared plus another. The coefficients are all rational numbers. These four rational numbers are numbers that are not able to be determined using the BCOB uh, formulation. But if you do the induction, you know that higher, lower genus are known. So all these things are known. And the propagator is already calculated by Yamaguchi Yao in this special case, or known. So all these things are known. They have formulas explicit written down. Now, it tells you that to determine all the genus two, all degree go moitan in There are infinitely many, infinitely many numbers to determine. It actually all boils down to determination of four rational numbers. So this equation tell you tell you uh, 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 a reduction of infinitely many degrees, all the all the degrees in genus two specifically reduced to four spatial rational numbers, which of course uh, will be covered if you know if you know the beginning easy ones, if you know the beginning low degree ones, like genus two degree zero, genus two degree one to genus two degree three. If you know these four numbers, like you will you will know these four numbers. So, so that's what they did. And indeed, in this case, there's a Gromuitan Gobakumawa conjecture that I will not do that. But uh, in this case, you can, uh, you can show that this actually uh, is true. Uh, 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 and all these low degree genus two Gromuitan are determined by genus zero only embedded Gromuitan, embedded curve counting, which are called uh, Gobakumawa by inference, which I already know. So, I mean, at, that, at their time, it's not known in algebraic geometry, but uh, they can they have a way to, to 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 guess what they are. So so they determined big F two like thirty years ago. The issue is that this equation is argued using pass integral. It is not. It doesn't converge. It does not converge. All the F two the, in their paper is B side pass integral. This is B side pass integral. Okay, so 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 it doesn't exist in algebraic geometry thirty years. ago. And Yamaguchi Yao uh, just uh, interpret things a little bit uh, more, uh, uh, a little bit more. So that spatial four series, which we now can uh, consider to be uh, very uh, explicitly written down, so, uh, this, uh, periods. This OB, this rule implies that your FG is in this ring too. Okay. The reason is that your propagator is in this ring. The propagator is in, in this ring. And uh, you, 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 the this of this rule says that you do some graph sum, and this is equal to fg. But the rule says that this guy is, uh, is inside polynomial ring of x. Big x, big x is here. Big x is here. It's already in the polynomial ring. And the graph sum, each of them consists of lower genus, which by induction, all the, all the vertex are using lower genus, something like this. And then the, 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 the edges you use to connect them is one of, one of these propagators, which is already calculated by Yamaguchi Yao, uh, actually at that time they know it, uh, to, be, to be in the ring. Uh, 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 yeah, so the vertex also contribute by induction in the ring. This is in the ring. So you know that FG is in the ring because every, every other term are in the ring. So this is a consequence of the BCLB Feynman rule says that FG must be in a ring, in a, in a spatial ring. People now uh, usually call Yamaguchi Yao ring. Uh, and this is a conjecture uh, called the finite generation. As a consequence of BCLV, we will respond. Let's look at the genus one example. Genus one, uh, uh, when I went to Stanford in 2002, I met uh, Eric Singer. So he spent like four years or maybe even longer on this problem uh, to get genus one environment directly by analyzing the modular space. This is really a crazy job because I, I, I follow his approach a, after he, 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 he finished. He used synthetic geometry, I uh, used geometry. And I find it exactly hopeless to do higher genus. There's no symmetry obstruction. You cannot use motivic counting. I mean, you need to handle all the, all the singularity anyhow. So, so this, if you are talking about genus one, you have to insert one point to make it sta stable. Let me not talk about that. The insertion can be solid or dotted. So when it is solid, this is genus one with one, is one solid insertion. And when it is dotted, 
uh, you will, the, this is an extended Feynman rule, let me not spell it out. So this is genus one with no solid, but one, one dotted insertion. And the, the, the last time is genus zero, three, three insertion, and there's a propagator, S11. One, one. Okay, and there's some is, 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 uh, is called this FG. Uh, small FG in special case with markings, now they are one marking, uh, similar objects. So if you calculate, this is, this is very simple. This is all just from definition. And all the given tiles and the Liang Liang work says this is one. And the propagator is this guy. This is the propagator. So therefore you get a explicit expression. And the right-hand side is indeed a polynomial in, in two variables because uh, uh, it's three G minus three, but there's a marking. So you can determine this by low degree Gromm Witten. And th th there you get this. You get, you recover Zinger's result in three lines. And this is not what Zinger did. The Zinger analyzed the Mojai spaces. Uh, it's really long, take more than 50 pages, I guess, in total. Now, uh, the right hand side, if you try to differentiate against big A, because you, all these things are in the ring, A, B, uh, B1, B2, X. So for any object in here, uh, you can talk about differentiate against A. If you do differentiate against A, uh, uh, this is what you, you, you're going to get. I mean, uh, 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 there's no A here. This, this guy, you differentiate against A, you get one. So this is what's the bar. The right hand side is a polynomial in big X. So you different, big X and big A are different objects. So, so when you differentiate against A, they disappear. So this, this equation is an equation that Yamaguchi deduced as a clearly a consequence of BCOV rule, it has all genus version, and people now call it yamaguchi functional equation. And in recent years, uh, the, the group of Rahu, uh, Tande, they try to approach this thing for the case that your variety admit toric approach in the beginning we mentioned. So they can deduce this, but they, the, the, the method itself is it, it do lack the nature of, of C the propagator, geometric meaning. Because you don't have S, your S disappear. So this is uh, called by some group of the uh, uh, enumerative geometry people by the mathematical version of HAE, which is some name that I do not appreciate too much because this holomorphic anomaly, anomaly means that something is not holomorphic. Everything is holomorphic here. But anyway, this is a conjecture, Yamaguchi functional equation. So it, it is a natural question. I have 15 minutes. I think I can finish it. Uh, Okay, so we come to the question, is there a Feynman structure in A side? Everything I talk about, uh, except the statement, uh, the way they deduced it from physicist paper are by the B model pass integral, the B, B side the realization of the pass integral, assuming the convergence, which actually do not. You need, they actually assume after renormalization definition, things converge, and everything they talk about are things after renormalization. There's a group of people who try to work on renormalization, but by CD, but I, I'm not, I'm pretty sure uh, 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 they, they actually, uh, it has been many, many years. It, it, you, it, it is too difficult. Okay, so a very naive question is that, can we have propagator in geometric meaning in A side? Are there ambiguity in A side? Do they have enumerative meaning? Are they counting curves, or counting shifts, or counting whatever things? Uh, we, no physicist will believe it because in BCLV, this S comes from the solve the differential equation. The, the way you define S is this guy. This is, this is, this is uh, a, a very complicated thing. It, it involves Biopetersen metric, a product of a, a bunch of Biopetersen metrics. The way you define S11 is this, and a small fg is worse. Uh, it comes from solving differential equation. That also comes from that, but S11, uh, is defined to be the solution of this. So there are actually many choices. There's no canonicality. So uh, I have 20 minutes. I'll try to tell you uh, how to see this Feynman rule in algebraic geometry, which means that uh, 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 they do have a geometric indication. And there's no way we, we try using pass integral to do this. And uh, of course, it will uh, successfully upset Feynman. Uh, Okay, so in the beginning, this is the, the dream. So uh, suppose you want to handle your uh, club yao uh, uh, witten theory. I want to tell you just the ideas uh, and leave all the details behind. 
So uh, let me see. Uh, right. So your Z is a is a quintic colloidal. This is a hypersurface in P4. And you are trying to count curves maps to, to your quintic. Let me try to draw in this way. So the first, I, the first uh, uh, input is that you can try to consider the following object. You pick a point outside Z and you try to connect this point to Z to, to form up a cone. This is a cone. It's a algebraic variety. Now, the, re the idea is that we want to use counting curves, counting curves of this. But there's no, the, the, this is actually not definable because your target variety has cone singularity. There's a, met, from physics point of view, the metric will, will make the path integral even worse. The correlation model is not well defined. You, in algebraic geometry, it means that it has the obstruction theory fail to be perfect. You, if you try to look at curves maps to this point, you find out there are higher obstructions, right? But suppose we pretend that they are all okay. They, they, you can de you suppose you can define the chromatin of this guy. Suppose we can do that. Then the this is why we call it the dream. Then we know that uh, first of all, uh, this guy can be can be written in this equation. The, this is a hypersurface, but you regard it in CP5. A general point in CP5, sorry, a general point in CP5 should be, this is the P4 part, and uh, you, the, 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 there's, a, there's a new uh, uh, additional variable, uh, sorry, U. Okay. So this is a hypersurface in CP5 of degree five. So if you can define Gromoitan theory of this hypersurface, whatever it means, this is funnel. This should be a Gromoitan of a funnel variety. And the Gromoitan of funnel variety has a very special uh, feature. If, if you look at the smooth funnel variety, if you look at the smooth funnel variety, the virtual dimension is always positive. Uh, if you if your x is funnel, then the the moduli space of maps uh, into this funnel variety, you have this n minus three one minus g, the virtual dimension because this is positive, and uh, when your degree becomes large, uh, this is always this always vanish. Uh, this is always positive, which means that you can have the following. Uh, 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 Feature. So counting curves in this quintic cone, genus G degree D, and when you insert one, this will be zero for D being positive. Well, for D positive enough, indeed in this case, for, when, when D is larger than genus, when D is larger than genus, you, you will find it happen. Now, you, uh, now look at this moduli space. You are studying the moduli space mapped from curve to this quintic cone. Now you can impose a torus localization on your last coordinate. Then the fixed point is the original quintic Calabi Yau together with this additional spatial conic point. And then when you do the localization, the moduli spaces will provide you uh, following features. Either you can have a uh, huge curve maps to Z, map to Z, this guy go to Z, and together with the strat P1 come to here, and then a, a, a big genus go to this point. So you will have the picture roughly graphically represented in the following way. The localization formula says that this integral equals the counting of maybe your whole genus is in here, go to quintic. Maybe you have some genus here, some P1 go to one, go to this conic point. The, the, let me call this point O. Uh, it, this means conic point, maps to conic point. So you will have this G2 and there are some is equal to G and maybe even more, you may have, you may have also that P1. Uh, you may have even have worse ones, but anyway, you may have uh, this guy 
Okay, this is genus genus three, total are genus three. Uh, I draw. I'm sorry. I draw the straight line and the curve uh, together. They are all. They are all Riemann surfaces, uh, 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 plus some other terms which may have genus F1. So, the thing is that this graph sum, if you really try to package them, package this course give you one point of genus three. The, the the second graph and the third graph and all the very similar graph give you a picture like this, genus two and the genus one, like this. Because, because uh, 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 here it is genus, there are two holes and here there are one hole, so genus two and one. And this single edge, the single edge here, uh, this single edge, solid, solid edge, corresponds to the sum of all the possible way you travel from, from, he, from quintic to the points and come back and come back, sum over all the degrees. It is a power series in degree. And then all the other terms, they are just all the Feynman diagrams, like possibly, and plus something else, which you play some game to argue they are polynomial in Q or in X. Then you finish VCOV. This is just a finish of VCOV. And it, the, 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 the key point is that here, the way you count the propagator comes from holomorphic curve outside the quintic cloud you, you, you are looking at outside. So all the groups that are trying to work on Quintic, there are two other groups trying to do this. We always use the, 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 the way counting curve inside Quintic. The VCOV cur curve they in, in their paper, they are passing the group go to Quintic, but this, in, this propagator actually comes from some anti-holomorphic pass integral. That thing, if you want the holomorphic interpretation, it, must, it should, in this case, now it is expected to be a curve counting outside the Quintic. This is the Quintic and the propagator comes from here. Okay, so this is the dream, because we write this is a dream. Now the dream has a trouble, there are two trouble. I have 10 minutes. Okay. This is, there are two trouble. First, very easy. This guy is singular. Gromoitan is not defined. Secondly, if you really analyze this kind of localization formula, a genus G here, and you run, and a genus G here. If you do the analysis, if you are familiar with localization, at this branch and this branch, when you try to separate it, you separate it out, then you get this guy, a small thing. Now, you will, you will have this kind of uh, counting of this kind of object, where at this point, you may insert psi any power, hyperplan any power, and this psi any power, hyperplan any power. This counting exists. It, this counting exists. And it is not like the previous guy, S11, is only H, H, hyperplan, hyperplan. S1 is just one H, one psi, and the S is just psi, psi. This is, this is what BCOV give you, but, this, but here, if you do localization, you do given our theory, you find out that it's not the case. You have arbitrary power h, you have arbitrary power per psi. Maybe h, h at this power to, to, to three and per psi and arbitrary power. Now, uh, uh, the first question, uh, since I do not have enough time, I will try to tell you that this can be, this can be solved uh, using the so-called Landau-Ginsberg. Uh, Landau Ginsburg uh, treatment of this uh, uh, um, method in edge geometry. So uh, just one line. So Quintic Calabria is a subspace of P4. And you look at canonical bound P4, you can find the holomorphic function on the KP4 so that the holomorphic function critical locus is Z. Now, physics theory says that theory of Z counting invariance and counting invariance to this pair, people call it the Landau Ginsburg counting, should be equivalent. Now, it is already uh, built up uh, uh, by myself and Jun Lee 10 years ago that you can define algebraic geometry, the, the counting of a curve in from Witten kind counting in the Landau Ginsburg space. Now, you do the same game for this CZ. CZ can be understood as uh, the critical locus of CP5, you draw the CP5 and then you take the canonical bundle of CP5. And uh, the, oh, oh, yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Why, why? This is my book, so. Oh no. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I. Uh, Uh, it seems impossible for me to do it. <laughs> oh, okay, everything is gone. So uh, just let me not go to the detail. So this the, the following is the statement, just just one line statement. So this is P4 together with point. This is P5. Quintic is here. There's a point. This is a quintic cone, and you can try to do. You can try to put the canonical bundle of P five. You can do some partial compatibilization so that the there's a holomorphic function whose critical locus is almost the quintic cone, but it will be. It will actually looks like this. It is the quintic cone together with this P one. With one point here. This is P15, a weighted projective space. The critical locus has the shape to be like this. And uh, when, do the, when you do the torus localization, I should be able to finish in. When you do the localization, there are three kinds of fixed, fixed locus. Here, here, this is quintic, this is one point, and this is an orbital point. And if you do the in a counting sense, this is a non-reduced point. So you your Holomorphic curve may map to here by P1, and holomorphic curve map to here, and by P1, and holomorphic curve map to quintic. So your, your counting curves in this huge master space, this is the master space, uh, will, will be local, localized to three kinds of counting. And you will see that this is the, the, the infin at infinity counting, it is the FGRW theory. This is the ordinary conservative counting, and the lo lower one is the gromm witten counting. And this will solve the first question I write down. For the second question, um, uh, you, you, uh, uh, you'll see that, uh, I'm not going to do that, you, you, you'll see that uh, this is just telling you that we try to calculate using Maple. Uh, the two-point function is crazily complicated. And uh, when you try to do that, uh, find out the series, uh, I really thought about uh, quitting uh, not only this subject, but also quitting mathematics at that time, it's like two years ago. But uh, there's an antidote. The antidote, let me try to be short. Instead of picking one point, you pick two points, say P1. And then you do the cone, you do this cone. So this is a cone, one side is quintic, the other side is P1. You may also try to look at P2, and here is quintic, and you produce the cone. And all these things, you can talk about is counting using the Landau Ginsberg machinery, and you have the torus action on the C star action on P1, so the fixed loci size is a two, or maybe or more generally, you have this. Uh, I'm sorry, Q is the Q is the quintic, sorry. You have these counting curves in here, realized using Landau Ginsberg model. You need to pick a uh, localization weight uh, to be cyclic, and the, the uh, the miracle appears when you use this theory, you count the two point function between the quintic and the point, the conifer point, there's an infinity, you forget the infinity. Just look at this kind of graph, then you really have just the HH and the invariant give you S11. In the, as a specific series, H per psi give you S1. This theory really counting give you the two point function equal to, equal to that guy predict 30 years ago, which the reason is just uh, two years ago, we don't know why, but right now there are a little bit improvement. And also per side per side give you S. So uh, the propagator is really equal to two point function in this, in this theory, in this counting, counting theory. It is, it is numerically checked. So uh, roughly look like this, and you are counting curve like this. Okay, so this is F3, and this is F2, F1, and together F2 with one started in, that there are, this is a propagator, S11. Maybe if you insert solid, 
maybe you insert dotted, maybe you insert dotted, then it is S, and so on. This is a sum. This picture is, is just a sum. And here this is genus two with two marking. There are two marking A, B, and the S, C, A prime, B prime. Okay. So this is a sum and you, you get the, pre, the wanted result. So rough picture like this, I should try to finish uh, just one, more, one or two more minutes. So at zero and one and infinity is like this and the localization looks like this. So the answer of the propagators in A side is that, yes, they are enumerating holomorphic curves with this moduli space of curves map, maps to the master space. People, we, call, we give it a name called the mixed spin and the P fields, because this is something appear in counting curve in Quintic, this appears at infinity, and that's why the name comes from. So the three propagator comes from enumerating chains, given plus two point function, and you have ambiguity. The theorem is this, so all the conjectures are true for quintic Calabria threefolds, and an uh, easy consequence is uh, the potential function fg is analytic near zero. It is not known for any compact Calabria threefold before, and if it is not compact, most cases just with a C direction localization, just even calculate the whole thing. So this is a work with Yong Hun Kim and Wei Pin and Marisa and so uh, many people contribute in different stages. Uh, Yong Hun and uh, and uh, Jin Li's causation causation is the one of the key uh, role to make the Landau Ginsburg solution appear. So uh, we have also followed FJR Christina and uh, in the later part of the project, the theory of given power called R matrices, which is the, the this two point function. If you cut into half, this is the R matrix. So uh, the theory about R matrices is a power series. There are several papers to that. So I'm not going to talk about future things. So these are physics. Great. Okay, okay that's, that's my talk. So uh, thank you for your attention and that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? So when you ask questions, please unmute your audio. So can I have a question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Physical things. Like yeah. in physics, like when you have a mirror, so then that means like, do we really have the same kind of type of operator, like propagators on both sides, A and B types? In your art, like you kind of trying to find those propagators in A side, right? Yes, yes. From, from the B side. Yes. Physically, is that known? Like they are using, they are having like the same kind of corresponding propagators in both sides, A, B side. Oh, there's the, the whole BCOV theory built on test integral that mm -hmm. cannot, cannot be, uh, the, the, the properties cannot be uh, deduced from A side version of the PESA integral. So the whole BCOV theory, uh, uh, except the uh, FG, uh, the, when t bar go to infinity, uh, this is a side. The, the, this is a side commuting. But their theory is about uh, extension. So there, there are new new coordinates. This is an interface integral involving t bar, a lot of places. This guy cannot have, uh, the, nobody know that this has uh, a side formulation yet. And they need to deduce this S11, uh, S whatever from, uh, this is from the calculation of all, most of the things this guy involved the so-called bio Peterson matrix are all about the mirror Calabria, B side Calabria. So there's no there's no uh, effective way to this uh, before them uh, before us. There's no uh, A side understanding of the Peterson yeah. So even physically, you're saying? Yes, yes. Physically, even in physics, the the, the whole BCOB paper is on B side Peterson integral. That's right. B twisted yeah. topological string. So in B side, like basically, you are doing like Chen Simon's theory, and then you give us some what notes. Oh, Chen Simon, Chen Simon. I'm not sure what you. Uh, Chen Simon is is a gauge theory on threefold, real threefold. So uh, when they do this Kodora Spencer, or you do you mean Kodora Spencer gauge theory? Yeah. So, yes. Here, as you mentioned here, like this is 3D Chen Simon theory. 
polymorphic transignment theory. I'm thinking about the action function, like when you yes. when you re, like denormalize those, quantize those things, right? Yes, the Cordona special case. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, you're, you're talking about this, right? This is yeah. also called holomorphic chain assignment. So this is in uh, I think BCOV chapter five, and very funny thing is that uh, so this is other than this part. Uh, uh, all the other chapters in BCOV are built from topological string instead of gauge, Cordell Spencer gauge. And also, uh, there are a group of mathematicians trying to make sense of this uh, Cordell Spencer gauge theory. Uh, and I guess, uh, to, to my knowledge, it is not uh, known that the randomization uh, has the unique choices of the infinite many initial conditions, ambiguity yet. So, in short words, uh, in mathematics, it's not defined yet. Okay, and there is another problem. So the topological string. So why the gauge theory equals string theory? So the, the, the BCLV used the argument from Wheaton, which is really argument to me in the air, called gauge string theory. Uh, however, all the BCLV holomorphic anomaly equation comes from topological string. So it does not come from Kodara Spencer. Does that uh, answer your question? The difference between gauge and string in the model. There's a, there's a question from NCTS. Sorry, I, I cannot. Yeah, you can speak louder. Yeah. So we see, we see O, O, V. So you have a five, 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 four. I think it should be a string theory. What uh, uh, you think it's a string theory? I mean, it's your way. You, you drop us a final block instead of worship. So I think it should be string theory, not QFT. Oh, it's not QFT. Yeah, well, yeah, you're right. Q, so uh, it's not a. Yeah. It's not for the QFT. The top is the QFT. Why the, why, sorry, I don't understand your question. Why what? Why the, why is it QFT? I think it's a string theory, but you have one step. It's a QFT one. Yes, it is a string theory. I, I'm talking about topological strings in, in this talk. I'm actually talking about its algebraic geometry realization. I'm not trying to touch, and indeed did not touch at all, any quantum field theory over dimension larger than two. You know, the string theory is the quantum field theory on, on two dimension. Okay, so other questions? Yes, yeah, so in this hmm. realization, like you're using like uh, a 2D, 2D, right? And then the other yeah. side is like if we use polymorphic transheimer theory. So then we kind of have like what the, the, what the BB formalism. Yes, that's how CD and Costello try to define it. But the holomorphic chain Simon version they now used require the deep brain. They, they, they need to require deep brain. But in here, it is no deep brain yet. So uh, you really need considering closed, closed things, so we don't have that. Yes, so uh, uh, they have different versions of construction. Uh, 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 their constructions uh, is unknown to uh, recover the Kodara Spencer for compact color BL3 yet. Okay. And uh, for, for holomorphic chain assignment, yeah. That's what I know. Let me know if I'm wrong. You are total, right? Uh, <laughs> nice I can question. recognize you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Uh, Okay, so let's thank uh, Professor Zhang for an excellent talk. Uh, on behalf of all the audience, uh, I applaud for his Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank everybody for attending the talks. 
Thank you very much. Okay. okay. All right. That's the end for today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then thank you. Our next talk will uh will be two weeks from now. Okay. Right. Yeah. So so I will see you in in, in two weeks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank bye, you. bye bye. Bye bye bye.